Now we're going to solve a non-quadratic equation with quadratic methods. Because as you'll see, we're going to turn this quartic equation into a quadratic equation temporarily. Notice, if you will, that 4 is 2 times 2. Why is that profound? Why does it relate? Well, it just so happens when your exponents have this relationship, we call it a quadratic-like equation because it's like a quadratic equation. As you'll see, we're going to use a very old process called u-substitution. We let u equal the middle term x square. Then u square will equal x square squared. Because u is x square, u squared is x square squared. That is so hard to say. But that gives us x to the fourth, so we can actually write the following quadratic equation based on our original equation. u squared minus 13u plus 36 equals 0. And so we write it again, and we're going to solve this. You can solve this one by factoring, and that's the way I did it. But you can use the quadratic formula. You can even use completing the square, whatever method you like the best. I factored this into u minus 9 times u minus 4, set equal 0. And then I separately set each factor equal to 0. If u minus 9 equals 0, then u equals 9. If u minus 4 equals 0, then u equals 4. Now I have to re-substitute the letter that was used in the original equation. After all, u equals x squared, so I re-substitute x squared in for the u. Then to isolate x, I take the square root of both sides, and I take the plus or minus square root of the constant. So on the left, I get x equals plus or minus 3. And on the right, I get x equals plus or minus 2. So it ends up there are four solutions to this quartic equation, which is entirely appropriate. If the highest power is 4, I'll have four solutions. These solutions are negative 3, negative 2, 2, and 3. We're now going to solve a quadratic equation that is in a little, uh, it's in a form that's a little unusual. But that's okay, we can do this. And we can do it without going to a whole lot of trouble. Notice that the t plus 5 in parentheses, that's being squared, is the same as the t plus 5 in parentheses that is not being squared. We can cut down on the time and energy it would take to solve this equation by using u substitution. If I let u equal t plus 5, then I'll, I can rewrite my quadratic equation as u squared 
minus 13u plus 42 equals 0. Then you can solve the equation using any method you like. I chose factoring because this quadratic equation is factorable. I set each factor equal to 0. And then I solved each resulting little equation. So that I got u equals 6 and u equals 7. Then I resubstituted t plus 5 for u, set that equal to the solutions. For instance, t plus 5 equals 6, so t equals 1. I subtracted 5 from both sides. t plus 5 equals 7, so t equals 2. Your solutions are t equals 1 and t equals 2. Now we're going to solve a quadratic-like equation that doesn't really look like a quadratic-like equation until you study the relationship of the exponents. Notice that 2 thirds equals 2 times 1 third. This is a 2 to 1 relationship that shows us that this is a quadratic-like equation. x to the 2 thirds minus x to the 1 thirds minus 2 equals 0 can be changed into quadratic form through u substitution. So let u equal x to the 1 third power. Then u squared will equal x to the 1 third power squared. And remember your laws of exponents. When you have a base raised to a power, raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. So u squared equals x to the 2 thirds power. We can now substitute this in the original u squared minus u minus 2 equals 0 will be much easier to solve. And it's factorable. You don't have to factor. You can use the quadratic formula, but I would rather factor when I can. So this factors into u minus 2 times u plus 1 we set each factor equal to 0, and we solve each resulting little equation. u equals 2, u equals negative 1. But what does u equal? u equals x to the 1 third. So x to the 1 third equals 2, and x to the 1 third equals negative 1. Well, what is x to the 1 third? It's the cube root of x. The cube root of x equals 2, and the cube root of x equals negative 1. Now all we have to do is solve these short little radical equations. To get x by itself, we need to cube both sides of the equation. That will release x from the radical and we find out x equals 8. Again, cube both sides of the equation and we find that x equals 1, negative 1. Oops, negative 1. So our solutions are 2, well, our solutions are 8 and negative 1.